So have, have the things that you said that the things I've been sending you are, are helping you? Yeah, it's very helpful to see what's going on in the market. Um, so I know that uh, the rates are going up now. Mm -hmm. So what do you think is happening? Well, it's funny you say that because I actually just opened something up that was telling me about that. Uh, you know, what's funny though, is we had a, an amazing drop last week. Mm -hmm. the rates. I mean, uh, I, I was calling up past clients that that were up above that rate to see if they wanted to, you know, try to get in on this market that was low. Mm -hmm. And, you know, turn around that today, they shot right back up. Today, they're at what? Um, they're back up to, like, last week, I, I financed somebody at uh, 285. And today, they are at... Um, that was for a 30 year fixed. And today they are up at, at 3.08 already, you know, and, and my, everything that I am looking at right now says that the market is getting worse, 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 worse. Uh -huh. And I, I think the reason that the, um, that they shot up, well, there was a lot of things that happened, um, over this past weekend, you know, the, the 10 year yield markets went up almost four points and that really, you know, affected the, the interest rates, um, you know, but then with the inflation going up, it, that kind of caused some of that, caused some of that pain, you know, because but everyone that I talked to about last week said that was a complete fluke and something that just shouldn't have happened. But we all capitalized on it, and you know there was a lot of sales because of that. So good for us, you know. Go team. Yep, <laughs> that's amazing. So, so, do you think uh, at the end of the year the rates are going to go up again? I, I think they are. I think they are. I mean, but so, um, what I mean traditionally it starts to slow down right now, right for us for. Uh, Real estate sales won because the holidays, real estate agents don't want to work. You know, um, the, you know, everyone's getting ready for the holidays. Nobody wants to move during the wintertime when it's too cold. So things slow down. Personally, I haven't seen it slow down. I'm still just as busy now as I was, you know, during the summer. And I'm like, what is happening? You know, and everybody that I talked to said that this year is crazy. Yeah. I'm sure you're experiencing it too. Um, you know, so we, we are expecting it to go up, but I think what happened last week is going to happen again, where we have this major big dip in the interest rates, like we did, you know, um, last week, which was amazing. So I'm, I'm going back looking at, at three months worth of interest rates right now. And, you know, last, this last week, I mean, the, the interest rate is going like this, and then it kind of goes, and then it comes mm -hmm. back up. Do you want to share your screen? Um, Let well, me allow multiple participants. Go ahead. So what I am seeing, this is what I'm reading right now. Mm -hmm. So this right here, this is the past three months. Mm -hmm. This is this right here is last week. Mm -hmm. And this is, you know, a couple of weeks ago. But mm -hmm. this of about a month ago right here. This right here is last week, this major, major drop. Wow. So, you know, the fact that that's happening, it, it's, it's crazy. You know, so you're trying to read all that information. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, and this, this is like your internal tool? No, no, this is uh, MBS Live. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a subscription service that most oh, of us okay. take a look at it. Um, I have this open every day. It's you know, I have uh, several screens in front of me, and that is always the one that's on the very top for me to look at. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it's it gives me the information of the day, you know, lets me know whether or not I need to do something. Like, for example, right here, um, where it says uh, use reported reprices, this says all of my counterparts, my colleagues that are saying, you know, Orion Lending at 243, their price got worse. Mm -hmm. You know, Chase at 219, the price got worse. That means the interest rate is climbing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and it, when we start at the beginning of the day, I mean, this started with United Wholesale at 
you know, at 11.25. All these times are Eastern. So what that's 8.25 here. And I also got the update on my phone. Like, oh, this is happening. What's, what's going on? Let's take a look at it. And, you know, and based off of yesterday's numbers, which it was late yesterday afternoon, when we saw the prices starting to get worse. And any, I, I tried to call everybody that I had that's waiting to get a loan lock saying, hey, prices are getting worse. We gotta do something. You wanna lock or you wanna hold? And you know, I had one person lock and a couple others. It's enough. You know, we gotta wait on this to happen. Um, and most of the things for people that are waiting for things to happen is appraisals. Appraisals mm -hmm. are the things that are making us wait. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, I'm doing the uh, refinance right now. Uh, I just got the email right before we came on here. We ordered it. We ordered the appraisal on Monday. I just got the email today, and it's scheduled for the 23rd of, of November. I was looking at closing that loan next week, and now it's going to be. Um, so it's the 23rd of October that it's the appraisal is going to be. And on top of it, it's at eight o'clock in the evening. So can you imagine how happy my borrower is gonna be when he gets that, right? Yeah. Then we have Thanksgiving two days over. Um, so I can't close that loan by, the, by that 24th. It's just not gonna happen because I won't get the report for another two or three days. Nobody's gonna work the weekend, the, the Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you know, uh, of Thanksgiving, nobody's going to work and to try to get that loan closed by the 30th. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> A lot of fun. I'm telling yeah. you, I might have to spend some, uh, some of my money and get my lock extended, you know, probably seven, eight days in order to get it to fund. Mm, uh, wow. on time. So um, myself as a, uh, as a mortgage professional, I seem to get the blame for, uh, late appraisals or appraisals not coming in you know it's like uh, yeah but, well there's nothing you can do about it so no and especially right now with uh you know the uh there's so many people buying and selling right now that appraisals they're 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 going crazy too mm -hmm. you know just as like you guys are and we are you know they're going crazy too because there's not enough of them to go out and do the appraisals then it takes yeah. some two to three weeks to come in and do an appraisal, then give them, you know, two, three, four, maybe up to five days to write the report and then we're stuck. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and also, I mean, the market is so crazy. There's not always comparable properties on the market. So that also caused some issues. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and especially like this home that, that I'm talking about, it's a custom home in a well-to-do neighborhood. And, you know, you, you go next door, it's a completely different house Yeah. You know, for, for several blocks. I mean, they're all different. They're all custom-made houses. Mm -hmm. so, so I'm gonna stop sharing that. So first, the difference between um, uh, pre-qualification and pre-approval. A pre-qualification and pre-approval are several different things. In a pre-qualification, what we're looking at is your uh, your debt to income, you know, how much you make as opposed to how much you owe. So I'm trying to find the thing I was looking for and I can't find it right now. So how much you owe compared to how much you make, you know, what that percentage is. For a loan to get approved, it's anywhere from 36 to 46% of what you make should go towards your housing. That's to include your mortgage payment, your insurances, your taxes. Uh, and if you've got an FHA loan, also to pay for that, uh, um, that mortgage insurance that you got. Um, so that, that should take up more, no more than 36 to 46% of your loan. Um, and we try to figure that out as fast as we can. When, and add to that, in order to get the prequel, we're also gonna look at your credit. Uh, we're going to do a hard pull on your credit to see how much, um, to see what's good and bad. And that's all it is for a pre-qualification. If I was to give you a pre-qualification letter, that means nothing to you as a real estate agent, because I have not done my job to do, look farther into their, um, 
their finances to give them a pre-approval. When we do a pre-approval, we look at all of their finances, we pull all their credit, we look at their bank statements, their employment history, their taxes for the last two years, you know, how long they've been employed somewhere, all those things go into a pre-approval. And then we determine how much they can afford at that point. What's actually happening is that we are going through a, um, all the things that we would do for a loan um, before you even give us a contract. So that time is shortened dramatically of um, you guys giving us everything to the point where we can get it funded. We're, we're just shrinking that as much as we can. Um, and, and that's, uh, especially in this market, if you have a buyer that's not pre-approved, they're probably not gonna buy the house, you know, or be able to put an offer on a house. Uh, so that's the difference between a pre-fall and a pre-approval. Um, so in what cases would you want to do uh, pre-qualification? If you want to see if you can afford something. Mm -hmm. So Daria, she's not sure if she can buy something. She's going to call me up or maybe go through a real estate agent and say, hey, I want to know if I can afford to buy a house. I got a big raise and this is what's going on in my life. So, hey, go talk to Sergio. Sergio's going to take a look at your, you know, how much you make. Mm -hmm. And your debt to income, and that's all we're going to look at. Yep. And and that's that's when I would do it is when you're looking to see if you can afford to buy something. And uh, people actually can do it themselves, right? They can find online calculators and see. They can, they mm -hmm. can, but they have to be really honest about how much they owe. Mm -hmm. You know, and when so, for example, um, when we pull a credit report, it tells us, you know, it can go in as far as telling us. It, let's say you already own a house. It tells us your mortgage, how much you owe in that mortgage, what your monthly payments are. You know, if you have cars, you know, all of that, that information as well, your credit cards, everything else. And it gives us a total of how much you're paying. Now we compare that with how much you're making. And, and then we see, you know, how much you actually, um, you can afford mm -hmm. at that point. Um, yes, you can go look at it, but, um, so let's say you go to creditkarma.com and they give you your, your credit score. Um, I think that's one of them, right? Yep. Um, that credit score is not necessarily gonna be the one that I get because the ones that I get comes from the three uh, credit bureaus and they have a larger, um, when it comes to buying a home, a mortgage credit pool is a lot bigger than a, it's a lot more, uh, has more gravitas. So it's it's a it's a it's weighted a little differently than with a uh, credit karma where they only do a soft pull because they don't see all the they don't see everything you owe or your credit history like like we can we can see quite a bit of your credit history uh, going back quite a few years mm -hmm. um, even to the fact that you, you had bankruptcies or you know you were late on that payment so many years ago you know and then. We're going to ask you about that late credit card, that late late payment that many years ago, because we have hmm. to explain that. How far do you look back? As far as the, it keeps reporting. So I have one that I'm doing right now. It's 20 some odd pages of credit report, which is wow. crazy. It's a crazy long one, but they had some significant um, credit events happen in their lives where the, one of them got hurt and they had some uh, some medical issues and they're still trying to get those paid. They had a lot of credit disputes that happened because of the medical thing that happened to them and they couldn't keep up with their payments on a bunch of other things. And then there's disputes and then a bankruptcy. So there's a whole list of things on their credit report. And uh, now we got them, they own their house right now. So we're helping them to refinance that house in order to pay off all of those things. So then it may be in a year from now, they can buy a new house is what their goal is. And since they have, their home has appreciated so much since they bought it, that they actually can use that equity to help themselves financially, which is a fantastic thing for them to be able to do. Mm -hmm. And at the, at the end of the day, it made me feel pretty good to be able to help somebody like that. Yeah, so. <laughs> that's fantastic. So for pre-approval, what kind of documents do people need to prepare before they go see you? Um, that I do have. So I need 
two months of W of uh, pay stubs, two years of W twos, two years of taxes. Um, uh, uh, your you know uh, what's it called? Your uh, ID, your social security card. Um, so this is what I need for. Can you see it says a uh, specific wholesale mm -hmm. at the top? Yep. So I need a copy of your driver's license, your social security card. If you are a permanent resident, I need your green card, or, you know, your visa, your proof of residence. Now, if you are not a, a, uh, a permanent resident or a citizen, you probably don't have a social security card. So I need your ITIN number. You know, th that's depending on what they do. Uh, one month of, of paycheck stubs, uh, two years of W-2s, all your jobs. Uh, two years of tax returns, um, two months of bank statements, two back, two months of all of your brokerage accounts, your uh, you know certificates of deposit, your mutual funds, bonds, stocks, that kind of stuff. All that does is building a a, a larger um, a, a larger um, what do you call it? Uh, uh, financial statement to, to prove that you can afford to buy something. Uh, if you already own a home, your current homeowner's insurance policy, a current mortgage statement, um, and your property taxes. Um, if you have, if the house is going to be, well, and this is a, from there down, from here, from here down, from homeowner's insurance policy down, is if you own more than one house. You know, so if I'm going to refinance your house, is what I need. If you're going to buy another house um, within a 50 mile radius, so it's probably going to be an investment property. And then we're going to need rental agreements. And if it's in an HOA, all of that information. And then if you're not a homeowner, I need your landlord's property information, part of management companies. And then if you're self employed, a year to date profit and loss statement. And what I do is I go in, I, I say, okay, I don't need that. I do need this. I need this. I don't need that. And I just go in and click and decide, you know, what it is we need. But this right here is a, a, a great way to explain what I need in order to get you into a, uh, a pre-approval. Mm -hmm. Because we are trying to get the, uh, like I said, we're trying to get the loan to a certain part before we can move forward with it. So all of this stuff. So if, if back in the day, if Daria, the, the real estate agent says, hey, we put an offer in a house, give this to Sergio and let's go buy this house. Back in the day, it could take 30 to 45 days pending, right? Mm -hmm. Now, what is it? A week, two weeks, <laughs> you know, that we have to work with uh, because trying to get those home closed. So you guys as a real estate agent get paid faster you know, is what is pushing this right now, which is fantastic because it means you get paid faster and I get paid faster. So the more work I do at the front end of it, before you even start showing them uh, homes, the more, the faster I can be at the back part of it. And all the hard work is trying to get this list uh, complete. So let's say that you now send me a driver's license and I look at your driver's license and I see it's going to expire in a month. Well, the, if, you, if you show them a house and it, they don't buy something for two months and they haven't renewed their driver's license, we're not going to move forward with the loan. So I'm going to be looking at that to catch all of those things that, um, to catch all those things that might be wrong right at the beginning, you know, before you even show them a house. You know, if the social security card is you know, looks like it's been crumbled up and thrown in the garbage a couple of times and it looks like, you know, a piece of messed up leather, they probably have to get a social security card. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's not a big thing though, because we can always just use their, their taxes to get the social security card. Um, so the one month of paycheck stubs, um, you know, just to see that you're currently working, that's all it's for. And we'll see on your W-2s and your taxes, how long you work somewhere. So that's just to, to prove that you're currently working, you know? And the longer it takes to get, um, to buy a house, I need updates on those, on those uh, um, pay stubs as the more months accumulate before you buy a house. 
uh, W-2s. It's just for the past two years. Nothing's going to change on that unless it's, you know, the new, you know, come January, I'm going to need 2020, 2021 pay stubs, you know. Um, two years of tax returns. Um, when someone doesn't do their taxes right away, for whatever reason, uh, puts in an extension. So now I need to do a, uh, you know, you have to submit the extension letter and then also give me another year behind that. So it's not just 2019 and 2020. If you haven't done your 2020 taxes, I need now the 2018 taxes, 2019 taxes, and your letter of extension as to why you haven't done your taxes yet. So, uh, and, and then we just try to see that everything is current. Now we're not gonna catch everything because even if you try to do everything, there's gonna be something you don't catch. It always happens. It happens to me all the time, like, okay, but then what I do is I go back and I, I, I make note of like, okay, so this is the second time they've asked me to, you know, for example, um, it'd be something, it'd be something. Uh, let's say that Daria has two houses. One is a, um, a partnership of a rental property, but you only own 25% of it. But you don't pay any of the, you don't pay any of the mortgage on it. You know, the, the, um, the house produces enough income that it pays for itself, but you're still on the mortgage. You know, you're still responsible for the mortgage, but you don't actually pay anything on it. Uh, we have to prove that, um, that uh, yes, over the last 12 months, you've been on time. You've paid, there's no late fees. There's no nothing wrong with it because one late fee on any mortgage that you have your name on will not get you another mortgage. They will not approve you for another mortgage. Um, that is the one big thing that catches a lot of people, especially with uh, investors, because maybe they, you know, they couldn't, uh, let's say the, the person paying their rent came up late on their rent and that investor is very dependent on that rent coming in. So we have to make sure that that catches a lot of people sometimes on being able to get another, another, um, another mortgage sometimes. Okay. So that opens up another question. Uh, why, um, what other ways that prevents you getting a credit loan from you? Uh, bankruptcy. Bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. If you have not, so it's two years after you've been released from a bankruptcy, you can apply for another mortgage. Um, there are some little tricks and, and, and things that you can get a mortgage one day after being uh, released from your bankruptcy. Um, and bankruptcy stays on your record like for 10 years, right? Yeah. And yeah. then after so, that time, then you can apply. Mm -hmm. After, so let's say that today, what's, what's today, the, the 10th of November. You cannot apply for a mortgage for two years. So mm -hmm. the 10th of November, 2023, you can apply for a mortgage. Um, but there are some companies that will say, November 11th, 2021, you can apply for a mortgage. But that mortgage interest rate is going to be over 7 to 8%. They're going to be very expensive. Um, and that's just because uh, they do that for people that have uh, quite a bit of money uh, because they're going to pay a huge deposit. And they are also going to take um, a hit on uh, on points, they're going to pay a little bit more in fees, and they're going to get a high interest rate. You know, but it's going to take them a couple, a little while to get that all fixed. You know, so that's why they can take advantage of that. Uh, any, I think we've gone over any late uh, payments on a mortgage will disqualify you from getting a mortgage. Uh, and I forget the length of time. It's usually it, it varies from company to company. Some might say you know just within the last year. Or within the last couple of years, usually it's two years at the most that they look at, um, and it really depends on the company. And you know, the more 
red flags that your application um, puts up, the more the farther back they're going to go usually. So we try to eliminate as many of that as much as we can at the beginning to say, you know, that now you're not going to be able to get one for X reason. And that's really the only two things that I see. Or, you know, if you, um, a, an extremely low credit score, even though there are programs out there that you can qualify for, there are pro, you know, that that's really going to be the big one. And it's mostly because of a cost thing. You know, um, I have heard of, um, of a, uh, a lender that will go down to like 400 credit score. Wow. But the interest rate is gonna be crazy high. Mm -hmm. Not something that they would, uh, I would recommend to somebody because they may not be able to afford it. If your debt to income is too high, um, if it's over, usually if it's over 50%, we're gonna have a very hard time qualifying you for a loan. If you increase the amount of down payment, of course, the, the price of the home is going to, the, the price of the, of the loan is going to come down and your debt to income is going to come down. But are you going to really going to be able to afford that home if you make such a huge deposit? You know, are you going to use up all of your reserves in order to buy the home and then not have enough to live off of? That's a very big deal because we don't want to put people into a situation where they're going to lose their home or destroy their credit. So that's that's a pretty big thing for us too, is making sure you can actually afford to live where, you know, the house you want to buy. Um, what else, what else is there? Um, um, we have a few things that we call, you know, the 10 commandments, uh, which is like, uh, you know, while you're in the process of buying a loan, don't go out and buy a brand new car because that may increase your debt to income and then causing you not to afford your house. Uh, don't co-sign anybody because it does the same thing. Anything that increases your credit while you're in the middle of trying to get a mortgage, if it increases your debt to income, don't do it. The only ones that we don't look at for debt to income is medical. Because, you know, those can be extraordinarily high. They can be, you know, an insurance-based thing. And that's the only ones that don't count towards your debt to income. We don't look at those. And if you're... That's interesting. If your student loans are in deferment, like you're still in school, we only can apply 1% of your student loans to your debt to income. So if you... Um, have $100,000 in student loans, but you're still in school, I'm only going to hit you with uh, um, with $1,000 of that to your debt. Uh -huh. This is going to be the full $100,000. It's just the, the $1,000. So that's not a bad thing. That helps a lot of people be able to buy a house. So. And one more question. Um, what type of loan you specialize in? What type of loan do you have? Uh, we have, I have all types of loans because I deal with 45 lenders. Um, so I have like the, the super jumbo stuff way up here. And then I have, you know, uh, uh, renovation loans, construction loans, uh, all the government stuff. I have, I can do ITIN loans. Um, you name it, we can do it. That was fantastic. Thank you so much, Sergio. Yeah, and like I said, if you have any questions ever, please give me a call. Alrighty, thank you. I'm here for have you. So. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.